I've been looking forward to this car arriving. My little calendar where I've got when press cars are uh, arriving. This one was circled with a big red permanent marker because it is the latest Land Rover Discovery. It has a great big three litre diesel V6 up front there, pulling, okay, quite a lot of weight. It's about 255 horsepower. But the thing with Land Rovers, it's not about the power or the straight line performance or anything like this. It's about the, the whole experience you get. And for me, Land Rovers are arguably the only car you'd ever need to own. You may have seen the Defender review we did um, a couple of months ago. Fantastic car, full of character, but uh, you know, for today's day and age, it's a bit agricultural, uh, though we do love it. This is the 2014 Land Rover Discovery. Big seven seater and, oh, where to start with praising this machine? Okay, so under the bonnet, as mentioned, we've got a three litre uh, turbocharged V6 diesel engine, which produces 255 horsepower. We also have a raft of toys in here. We've got leather seats that are heated. Uh, we've got a fridge in here. We've got TVs in the backs of the seats. It picks up digital TV or you can play DVDs and things. Um, you know, all the seats are electrically operated. We've got the various memory functions as, you, as you'd expect. And, you know, this car costs 63,000 pounds, this specific car. So, as you'd expect, it has pretty much every toy under the sun, all the sunroofs and, and heated seats, even in the back, actually. Um, the first few days of driving this round, I was like, oh, this is, this is quite nice. Okay, obviously around town it's, it's a bit big, but visibility is very good all the way around. And the blind spot detection in the mirrors is a fantastic help. Uh, and the stop start, as, as we've just experienced here, is very good to try and save what fuel you can. I mean, the best I have managed to get out of it is about 27 mpg in combined environments. Lovely experience to drive around. However, 63 grand is a lot of money, a hell of a lot of money, uh, even for a vehicle like this. And the first few days I was driving around and, and trying to justify this amount of money, and it sort of just fell shy of that. I, as lovely as it is, and as, as practical it is, as it is, especially with that split folding tailgate at the rear, I thought, God, that's very expensive. But then I headed out to Salisbury Plains. Now, those who aren't familiar with Salisbury Plains, it's where our British Army trained to go to war. It is effectively a simulated war zone. Um, so you have, you know, amongst unexploded tank shells, potentially, you, you have the military using their tanks, and it really is some of the roughest, nastiest terrain you could ever come across. And so we thought, well, after, after being interrogated by a platoon of soldiers as to why we were there, we were allowed onto the, the training grounds and all of a sudden this car's cost makes sense. I'd say about 70% of the value of this car is in the technology on board that enables you to just point the nose anywhere and go. High range, low range, it's all there. You tell it what terrain you want, and it'll, it'll work out what power to send to each wheel individually, it'll brake individual wheels, you've got hill descent where it'll keep the car at a very specific speed and not let it run away down steep slopes. Uh, you know, we, if you look at the terrain response here, you've got everything snow, muddy ruts, gravel, sand, uh, rocky climate, um, it's all there and it's much the same as the Defender presents itself as a very, very capable machine. This is just as capable, particularly with its ability to, to raise its ride height uh, with its suspension, um, but it's not quite as hard work. Now some purists would be like, oh the Defender makes you work for it, you know, you, you're more involved, that's how proper off-roading should be done, and yeah, for the purists that works. But to tell you what, whilst we're out here and there was mud spraying up the car and, you know, we were literally climbing small mountains in this thing. Um, I was in here in comfort, air conditioned comfort with my heated seat and heated steering wheel and munching on chocolate whilst I was, you know, descending some of the, into some of the deepest caverns and things. It was just an incredible, incredible experience made all the, made so much easier by the fact that on the outside the car is infinitely capable, on the inside it's infinitely costing. 
and that's a fantastic balance to have in a machine and it just makes you feel you know you could take it anywhere it's great for long motorway journeys there's a bit of wind noise because obviously it's not the world's most aerodynamic machine um, but it'll happily go along the motorway this uh, eight speed automatic gearbox by ZF you've probably heard me praise it many a time in BMWs if you've read some of the reviews it's just absolutely seamless I mean look right I've just gone up and down three gears there uh, in each direction and there was no jolting no real physical feeling of the gears being changed it's so smooth and even better is that when each paddles clicked it really is that quick for the gear change it can be a bit dozy around town in this in this car um, you sort of put your foot down you have to wait and then it comes in as such um, but in manual mode it really is fantastically responsive um, so yeah okay very practical bags of space in the back loads of headroom you know I'd be very surprised if we found somebody who complained about the headroom here there's plenty of leg room in the back as well the two rearmost seats are maybe um, a little cramped for leg room uh, but I mean they're perfectly good for children a uh, bit of a squeeze for adults but yeah it's just the practicality and this thing can tow you know, massive trailers it's got enough torque and grunt to do such uh, you know real real hard work um, and I think by the end of this week I have in my mind justified the high price tag of this I mean let's not forget it's a premium product it's not it's not your run-of-the-mill 4x4 a Land Rover badge has prestige maybe not quite as such as its you know, Range Rover counterpart but you know it's, it's a badge of note so it wasn't going to be cheap in the first place but in combination with just how damn capable this car is I think I think that, I think it's worth it it is absolutely worth it um, and I do hope that plenty of discovery owners do discover uh, just how good their own machine is on and off of the road because that's the thing you drive along rise uh, race driving position you look at everybody from about six foot high and you feel like king of the road but the truth is this car is also king of everything off of the road also